yes you saw it right 12 ways to interact or build a relationship with god not one not two not three it's 12 it's a big number all right so welcome back to exotic astrology and today we are going to continue with our shrimad bhagavatam series after a long time and we are in the first canto first chapter third verse and i already made the part one of that verse and now is the part two so if you have not watched it then please go and watch it again all right and the it's there in the playlist so i will read the shloka once again 1.1.3 nigama kalpataro or galitam phalam sukha mukhad amrit davya samyutam pibat bhagavatam rasamalayam muhu raho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha o expert and thoughtful man the translation relish shrimad bhagavatam the mature fruit of fruit of the desire tree of vedic literatures it emanated from the lips of shri sukhdev goswami therefore the fruit has become even more tasteful although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all including liberated souls so in the last video we discussed uh, the first paragraph and the second paragraph and there i said that uh, how to make your life fulfilling and get rid of a boring lifestyle that is what i said in the last video and in this video we will start from the uh, third paragraph of this shloka the third purport all right and yes if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me then you could go down to my website in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will not only find him you will also know how to interact with him all right so there you go the paragraph every living entity beginning from brahma the first born living being within this material world down to the insignificant ant desires to relish some sort of taste derived from sense perceptions these sensual pleasures are technically called rasas such rasas are of different varieties in the revealed scriptures the following 12 varieties of rasas are enumerated number 1 rodra anger number 2 adbhuta wonder number 3 shringar conjugal love number 4 hasya comedy number 5 veera chivalry number 6 daya mercy number 7 dasya servitorship number 8 sakya fraternity number 9 bhayanaka horror number 10 vibhatsa shock number 11 shanta neutrality number 12 vatsalya parenthood the sum total of these rasas in is called affection or love primarily such signs of love are manifested in adoration service friendship paternal affection and conjugal love so among these 12 rasas which i just mentioned these five are primary rasas which are they adoration service friendship paternal affection and conjugal love the se- remaining seven are secondary rasas these five are primary and when these five are absent love is ap- love is present indirectly in anger wonder comedy chivalry fear shock and so on for example when a man is in love with a woman the rasa is called conjugal love but when such love affairs are disturbed there may be wonder anger shock or even horror wow it's like a movie <laughs> sometimes love affairs between two persons culminate in ghastly murder scenes my god so true such rasas are displayed between man and man and between animal and animal there is no possibility of an exchange or 
rasa between a man and an animal or between a man and any other species of living beings within this material world there could be some interactions of course the rasas are exchanged between members of the same species but as far as the spirit souls are concerned they are one qualitatively with the supreme lord therefore the rasas were originally exchanged between the spiritual living being and the spiritual whole the supreme personality of godhead the spiritual exchange or rasa is fully exhibited in spiritual existence between living beings and the supreme lord the supreme personality of godhead is therefore described in the shruti mantras vedic hymns as the fountain head of all rasas when one associates with the supreme lord and the and exchanges one's constitutional rasa with the lord then the living being is actually happy the shruti mantras indicate that every living being has its constitutional position which is endowed with a particular type of rasa to be exchanged with the personality of god at in the liberated condition only this primary rasa is experienced in full which means to the degree we are materially covered or contaminated or conditioned we cannot experience this rasas with god we will be experiencing this only with mundane people that's the main point here that we have to elevate our consciousness by which uh we become more and more pure and you know we can understand spirituality more and more all right now in the liberated condition only this primary rasa is experienced in full in the material existence the rasa is experienced in the perverted form which is temporary and thus the rasas of the material world are exhibited in the material form of rodra anger and so on therefore one who attains full knowledge of these different rasas which are the basic principles of activities can understand the false representations of the original rasas which are reflected in the material world the learned scholars seek to relish the real rasa in the spiritual form in the beginning he desires to be one with the supreme thus less intelligent transcendentalists cannot go beyond the conception of becoming one with this spirit whole without knowing of the different rasas so that is impersonal liberation where you have no interaction with god in this shloka it is definitely stated that the spiritual rasa which is relished even in the liberated state can be experienced in the literature of the shrimad bhagavatam due to its being the ripened fruit of the vedic literatures by submissively hearing this transcendental literature one can attain the full pleasure of his heart's desire one must be very careful to hear the message from the right source Shrimad Bhagavatam is exactly received from the right source. It was brought by Narad Muni from the spiritual world and given to his disciple Vyasadev. The latter in turn delivered the message to his son Sri La Sukhdev Goswami that is why we read in the shloka Sukha Mukha and Sri La Sukhdev Goswami delivered this message to Parikshit Maharaj. Just 7 days before the king's death Shila Sukhdev Goswami was a liberated soul from his very birth he was liberated even at the womb of his mother wow and he did not urge undergo any sort of spiritual training after his birth that means he was already a self realized soul he was perfected being at birth no one is qualified neither in the mundane nor in the spiritual sense But Shila Sukhdev Goswami, due to his being a perfectly liberated soul, did not have to undergo any evolutionary process for spiritual realization. Yet, despite his being a completely liberated person, situated in the transcendental position above the three modes, he 
was attracted to the transcendental rasa of the supreme personality of god it who is adored by liberated souls who sing vedic hymns the supreme lord's past times are more attractive to liberated souls than to mundane people he is of necessity not impersonal because it's only possible to carry on transcendental rasa with a person in the shimal bhagavatam the transcendental past times of the lord are narrated and the narration is systematically depicted by shila sukhdev goswami thus the subject matter is appealing to all classes of persons including those who seek liberation and those who seek to become one with the supreme whole there you go so the, the thrust of this video is that there are these 12 rasas which i had mentioned these are the ways by which we interact with god so we can take example so for example uh, hanuman ji is in one of the rasas in among these 12 yes so hanuman ji is in dasya ras servitorship then for example yashoda mai because hanuman ji had served lord ram as a servant of, of course everybody is a servant but specifically he is uh, showing dasyam here then sakyam sakyam means friend so we all know that uh, sudama was a great friend to lord krishna then arjuna was a great friend yes these two personalities especially so they were also behaving like uh, friends they were exchanging a particular rasa one of these 12 then vibhatsa vibhatsa is shock and to some extent uh, bhima also elabor- uh, exemplifies this because uh, he also you know fought and bhishma also to some extent then vatsalya is yashoda mai of course and adbhuta wonder hasya comedy so many are there you see rodra anger Vira, chivalry, Viryaras, Bhishma Pitama exemplifies this. Bhishma Pitama fought with Lord Krishna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Fought doesn't mean they literally fought, but they say that uh, Bhishma was uh, shooting arrows and you know Krishna's whole body was bleeding. It it is said in the Mahabharat, and Krishna was very pleased by <laughs> his arrows because Bhishma is one of the twelve Mahajans, as we know. Which shloka is there where yamaraj tells to the yamaduta swambhu narada shambhu kumaro kapilo manu prahlado janako bhishmo balirvaya sakhi vayam bhishma pitama the word is there so he is one of the 12 mahajans he is a great personality his greatness is beyond all the vedic literatures and is is so great that he is ready to fight on the side of the kurus the evils the criminals who always wanted to downgrade dharma and religious principles by doing nefarious activities but because krishna wanted to demonstrate to the entire world that i don't care who you are even if you are as great as bhishma and you fight on the side of evil you will still fall one day so that's how bhishma pitama exhibited viryaras Rodra is there, anger is there. Yes, Shishupal displays anger, envy, then so many other personalities. Then Shringar, yes, Rukmini displays this, Jambavati displays this. Then uh, so many, all of Krishna's queens, Nagnajiti, she em, uh, she exemplifies this. Then Krishna's gopi is headed by Sri Mati Radha Rani, she also exemplifies this. there you go there these are ways by which uh, and then there is shantaras also now in vindavan there are many of the cowherd boys who do not interact with krishna but they appreciate him from a distance so they exemplify shantaras all right they are neutral basically and vatsalya as we all know yashoda mai nanda maharaj devaki vasudev and to some extent kunti devi also because uh kunti devi is at the same level of yashoda mai i mean that's what is said in the scripture she is also very greatly elevated so 
these are ways by which uh, we see that we can also interact with God and he's a person and that's what is mentioned here that uh, many a times these rasas are exhibited in the material world but they take a perverted form so it's mentioned here that sometimes love affairs between two people culminate in ghastly murder scenes you know sometimes there's this concept of love triangle a man is in love with a woman and the woman is in love with somebody else so then the man goes and tries to kill that man who he thinks is loved by the one he loves <laughs> And then what happens? Uh, the police comes and it's like a epic movie scene. And especially there are so many movies which are made, you know, and so many TV serials, you would know, which demonstrate such principles. So they take a perverted form. But when we become more and more pure, when we elevate our consciousness, we will realize that we are able to experience these rasas not only with the mundane uh, society here, with the materialistic people, but with God also, ultimately. That is what we will realize. But that will take time. That means that uh, we have to elevate our consciousness. We have to come at the level of these personalities like Arjuna, Bhishma, Pitama, Yashodama. Of course, they are divine souls. They are great souls. Nobody can anyway <laughs> match their standard. But at least in us essence, that is what we should be doing. And that is what is being stressed here, that God is a person and we can interact with him as these great souls interacted. Okay, so, but the problem is we are so much covered with material desires, material plans, plans for prosperity, material plans to enjoy with the opposite sex, that whenever we think of God, then we are clueless. We don't know what to do, how to do, when to do, how much to do, what not to do. And that is why you will see many people these days, they will do something in the name of spirituality and then they will say, oh, we are being spiritual, you know. There are people who will smoke and they will drink or they will indulge in illicit sex. They will watch things like pornography and then they will still claim, you know, oh, we are very religious actually. Or rather than saying religious, we are very spiritual. Last night I was, uh, you know, some people say that, you know, I was smoking and I had a spiritual experience. It was divine. <laughs> All right. So the point here is that if we want to experience these rasas, which we anyways experience in this material world with God, then we have to elevate our consciousness. And how to do that? That is what is written here that one must read the Srimad Bhagavatam. That is what is mentioned here. All right. Uh, in the liberated condition, only this primary rasas are experienced in full. That is the most important part here. All right. And because Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of all the Vedic literature, so when we continue to read this and listen to uh, people who speak on the Shema Bhagavatam, then we will realize that gradually we are getting off the covering of the material desires and we will start developing uh, spiritual desires by which we can one day hopefully achieve this state. All right, so we will continue with the next part. I guess uh, it should be over in another two parts the this shloka it's a very long purport it's a very important purport all right so there you go thank you very much for your attention and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know what are the ways by which you can connect to god okay and how to do that and which which is the state when you can do okay there you go if you want a consultation from me then you could go down to the link in the description section okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him in these 12 forms okay thank you very much